Hello everyone, it's Connie here from MenuDocs and welcome back to a new video on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing the long-awaited event handler. This has been requested quite a few times and we're just going to get straight into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to obviously make the events folder here and we're just going to leave it empty for the time being because we're going to head on over into structures and we're going to make an event.js, right? And inside here is pretty much going to create the base class for the event and we're going to have uh, a couple things in here. So Let's start off by obviously doing the module.export equals class and then we obviously event and what we're going to do here is we're going to have a constructor and inside this constructor we're going to have client name and then we're going to have options and if options isn't provided obviously have a have an empty object here. Now inside here we're going to have a few things we can have this dot name equals name right so that's going to get this parameter here. We're going to have this dot client equals client, which means that we're getting this parameter here. And then we're going to have a couple things here, and which is going to benefit us. So for instance, the ready event, we want the ready event to fire once it's completed, not on completion. So once it's completed, we're going to want it to fire. So we're going to ask for um, us to provide a parameter if we want once to exist. So we're going to have this dot type and we're going to have this equal options dot type uh, option dot once sorry so this is going to say so if we provide it it's going to be the property name is once obviously so using a ternary operator here we're going to say if the boolean is true it's going to return once and if it is not true we're just going to say it's simply on which is simple right something that you can understand and now this is where we get into something which we can extend on the like uh, speaking about it so basically we're going to choose the emitter so this means that we can access process events as well and stuff like that we can use this event handler for various different things but yeah one of the main things is we're able to use it for process um events which means that we can obviously um like go into where the process is having issues and we can do something upon that um but we can obviously get into that later on. So what are we going to do here? We're going to do type of, and we're going to do type of options.emitter equals, and then string. And this is also going to be a ternary operator. And we're going to do this dot client and options dot emitter. Now that's if it's true. And if it's false, we can do just options dot emitter. And then obviously if we don't provide said, we just want this to be this dot client. So let's quickly just get rid of all these fixable issues. Voila. Now, what we're going to do is have a run event. So we can do, well, not run event. We're going to have a run function and we're going to pass args. And then we're also going to obviously throw an error. And this is if the run event isn't provided because you definitely need a run event. However, you don't need a constructor or that for each file. Um, so we're going to do the run method has not been implemented in. And then we can give the name of set file here. And let's quickly just get rid of all of these bad boys as well. And then obviously we can add a, um, what is it? Disable for this line. And that will obviously uh, help your linter out there, make it happy. You would have seen that I had this in a string. This actually is a major mistake on my part. You don't want it as a string. You'll want this as obviously just a plain variable with a property. Now that this is done, what are we gonna do? We're gonna head on over into the utils file right here. And this is where we're actually going to make the load commands, uh, sorry, load events um, function here. So we're going to do obviously load events and then we're going to, and then we're going to pretty much copy the same kind of concept that we have above. So we're going to do return and then we're going to use the glob package here and it's going to do this dot directory and then events slash asterisk asterisk. And then we're going to have .js at the end. And this is where we use the then function and we can pass events as the parameter and we'll have some curly braces here. Now this is where we have a loop. We're going to have a, a for of loop. So event file of events of events. And then, and then we're going to delete the current cache if there is any. So require .cache. And then we're going to pass event file next in line. We're going to have a declaration here. We're going to do const and we're going to get the name from the object deconstruction here. I'm going to do path dot pass. I'm going to pass the event file. Now what's next? We're going to do const file equals. I'm going to do require and we're just going to require the event file name. Next in line, we're going to have an if statement and this if statement is going to have this dot is class so this is where we use the is class all the way up here again so we got is class and obviously it's a it's a function so we need to provide uh, provide at least one parameter which we need up here so the input 
and what we're going to do is we're going to provide the file now when we provide the file after this it's going to check if obviously it isn't a class and if it isn't a class what it's going to do is going to throw new error which is sorry no 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 we're going to throw a type error not just a normal error a type error and we're going to do event and then we'll provide the name doesn't exist or sorry export um a class right with an exclamation mark now next line we can do const event so we can do const event equals new file and that will have this dot client in it as well as the name but we can also quickly just do to lowercase here which means that we can have the event names with capital letters and such and that is a, a method next in line what we're going to do is we can do if and we'll simply just have event instant of and then event and if it isn't we'll throw a simple error so we'll throw new type error and inside this type error what we're going to do is we're going to have um event and pass the name of said event doesn't belong belong in the events directory next in line what are we doing so we're going to do this dot client dot events dot set and we're going to do event dot name and we're going to do event semicolon and then on the final line we're going to do event dot emitter and have the event dot type implemented here and then on this side here we're going to do name and for the last bit we're going to pass args args as the parameter for our arrow function here and it's going to be event dot run and that's going to be dot 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 args basically what we're doing is we're saying that we want to pass like for instance like for instance if we go here and we go to the client it will be able to quickly show us the events that we have so let's just pick a random event um one that i know has more than one parameter okay we'll just we'll just say for instance the channel update right so the fact that right here that's not what it should be it should be event event dot run um but basically what it's saying is that's going to pass every single parameter that we need that is necessary here so now we're going to head on over to the top of the file and we're just going to do const event equals and we're going to require said event base class event.js and now that is that file done next what we can do is head on over to the menu docs client and we can obviously quickly just yoink this we can just do load events so that will load the events for us and we're also going to quickly make a collection up here so if we go down two lines we're going to do this dot events equals new collection and then obviously trailing with the semicolon so now we can head on back over to the events and what we're going to do is we're going to make a ready dot js and inside the ready js what we're going to do is we can do const event equals require and this is where we require the base class so for instance because it's not in a its own nested category we can just do a dot dot slash structures and then slash event and that will get the event uh, base class next what we can do is we can do module dot exports equals and then class extends event and then what we'll do is quickly open early braces here we'll go down to have a constructor inside set to constructor we can have the args and then inside that we're going to have a super and inside the super we're going to have uh, dot 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 args and then we're also going to have uh, once and then we're going to set that to true what is next after that we'll add a semicolon here so what's next we can have the run function now and obviously there's no parameters so we don't need to actually pass anything now what we're going to do is we're obviously we're going to have a console log because we console log to show that the bot's online and we're going to have a an array we're going to do logged in as and then we're going to have this dot client dot user dot tag and then we can have another element and there we could do something like loaded uh and then we can do this dot client dot command dot size and then we could probably have something similar for the events because we we load the events and they're in a collection uh loaded events events and then we can do events here so let's show you something else as well right so for instance obviously we'll quickly get rid of this if it will quickly allow me get rid of that so that's all done that's the ready event done so what we'll do is we'll quickly jump back over it. we'll do this and we'll do message and inside here we'll do something like uh message.js right 
Now we can go back on over into the menu.docs client and simply remove this because we've already added it as an event. Now what we can do is actually head on down here and we don't need, no, we don't need that. So we need all this information here. Now what we can actually do is remove this completely. We don't need it anymore. And we'll head on over to the message.js. Sorry, we ne obviously need the constructor first, right? Well, not the constructor. What we'll do is we'll do const event equals require, and then we'll require the said event. However, because we've got this nested, we have to go back to, and then we'll get the event. Next, what we'll do is module.xbox, module.xbox class extends event. And we actually don't need the constructor because we're just gonna have the message as it is, right? So we can just run, have a run event here and we'll async this, we'll async at the run and we'll pass message as the parameter. And then we can just add all this stuff in here, all this information. And we'll obviously fix all these, this stuff here. But now that this isn't in the menu.docs client JS, we're gonna have to alter a couple things. So this, the client is what we're gonna have to, to have here. So we'll change all these to this.client, 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 this.client this dot client and then finally this dot client so that's all of that and pretty much and pretty much this is the message event done right so let's quickly start up the bot and we'll head on over into discord oh i realized the quick mistake here so we actually just want to have this as like hard brick braces instead of making it a function which should fix this issue here Oh, and as you can see, I have another issue here. So we actually didn't join the array here. So what we can do is we can join and then we'll obviously just have a quick, uh, we could have it as a new line and then we'll quickly just run that again. And you'll see that it won't come as an array. Yep. So it's come as such. So this, this is probably a good example of the fact that you can actually have issues even if you're recording videos to display code. This is a good learning step that, um, you know, coding isn't necessarily e easy and you're always going to have little mistakes here and there that you've accidentally done. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. Everyone does it. Um, so what we'll do is we'll head on over into Discord and we'll show you that this works. So we'll show that the message event works because as you can see, the ready event works, right? So this, this displays that the ready event works, but let's show you that the message event works. So let's see if we could, for instance, uh, tag the bot and it will return the prefix. So that's, that's proof enough already that the message event works. But for instance, okay, let's say that you're a little bit skeptical, for instance, okay. Uptime, uptime works, uh, ping, does that work? Okay, well maybe the help command. Well look at that, all of this works, all of this works right here, right now. There might be a little bit of things that may not work. There might be a little bit of things that do work. Obviously everything works, I'm joking, everything works. Um, that has been it for the video today. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I do appreciate all the support we've been getting on the videos and we're trying to get back into that double upload weekly kind of thing and maybe we'll even upload a little bit of three videos a week or three every second week or something like that. Um, but this has been Connie here from Docs, and I do appreciate everyone for coming out to the video today and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.